We could take you. We can't rent the whole Good evening. It is uh, Monday, September 11th, uh, a day in history that I'm sure we will remember for years to come, as we call it, Patriots Day. Um, this is the meeting, regular council meeting of Cross Lake, and so at this time I call the meeting to order, and we will begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The first order of business is to approve the additions to the agenda. And so if I could have a motion on the floor to approve those. Any council member would like to? I'll make motion. I'll second. Brad Nelson first. Uh, David Nevin second. All those in favor of the motion on the floor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Under mayor's report, I just want to make an announcement that on September 28th from 5.30 to 7.30 at the American Legion, our comp plan committee, which consists of National Joint Powers Alliance and Region 5, will um, be hosting a public forum on the comprehensive plan update. Several of us from the council have been on this committee, and it has uh, been a great experience, and uh, I think you will uh, be very pleased with where they are uh, taking our, up, taking our comprehensive plan and moving into the future. Also, you have until September 15th to fill out uh, the survey. You can either go online at crosslakers.org or you can get hard copies at the City Hall, Community Center, or the Chamber. And so please do that um, over the next couple weeks. Thank you. Under public forum, no action will be taken on any of the issues raised. If appropriate, the issues will be placed on the agenda of a future council meeting. Speaker must state their name and address, and each speaker is given a three-minute time limit. Are Excuse there any? me, Mayor. If, if, we, if we could, could we do the consent agenda before we do um, public forum? Oh, didn't I get the approval on that? No. Nope. Okay. Diehard football flan. <laughs> Um, so let's back up a minute, and um, we'll let any of you who would like to speak after we have an approval on the consent on the consent agenda. Thank you, Mike. So, do we have an approval? I'll make a motion to approve the consent calendar. I'll okay. second it. Dave Nevin Dave. first. Dave Shrupp second. All those in favor of the motion on the floor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried. Does anybody want to step up to the? Microphone tonight, and with any comments on how well we're doing at the city? <laughs> okay. Um, then we'll move right into the city administrator's report. Mike? Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the first item I have from the city administrator's report, if I could pass this over to uh, Brad and have Brad uh, person have him put that on the overhead. Um, we just completed a, a meeting at 6 o'clock, uh, and most of our discussions surrounded about coming up with a resolution to approve the pay 2018 preliminary tax levy. And we explained to the council that um, at this point, it's a preliminary number. We're trying to set the levy at an amount sufficient to do the things that we're projecting in the budget. We know that we'll have some budget changes coming up over the next month or so. And again, this is preliminary. Um, it can only go down after this point. It cannot go up. So after about 40 minutes of discussion, just, an, just recently, we came up with a preliminary um, number of about 7% over last year. And a big chunk of that, about half of that is to pay for, we're proposing to issue about a million dollars of bonds to pay for the balance of the sewer project and to generate enough cash to do some of the capital items we have on the docket for 2018. So at this point, I would ask the council for a motion to approve the preliminary uh, budget, as uh, we talked about earlier. 
I will make a motion to approve the preliminary budget of 7%. I'll second it. David Nevin first, Gary Heacock second. All those in favor of the motion on the floor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, thank you. The, the second item under my report is, is you have in your council packet a letter dated September 1st, 2017 from Briggs and Morgan. And Briggs and Morgan is a bond advisor, bond council, and they work with uh, different cities and different entities to put bonds together. And the bond we're talking about is the conduit debt that the city agreed to issue on behalf of the, of the new charter school that, that's coming up. And what the letter from Briggs and Morgan is talking about is, you know, this is the relationship that we agreed to at a previous meeting. Um, we're notifying you in writing that this is how we're going to go forward with, with uh, the bond advisory portion of that transaction. And if you have any questions or you don't like that arrangement anymore or want to do something different, now's the time to speak up. So uh, it's for council information. There's, there's no action required on it. And if you have any questions on that, uh, please let me know and, and we'll get them addressed, okay? The, the third item under my report is a letter dated August 29, 2017 from Cross Lake Communications, uh, also known as Trico Technologies, LLC. And remember when, the, when Cross Lake Communications was sold, part of the agreement was that the new buyer was required to invest a certain amount of money over a certain number of years and periodically report to us and verify that this is um, our progress to date and here's how much we spent and here's the plan going for the rest of this year. And, you know, they do that every August. They'll be doing that every uh, August 31st. So that letter is just to inform the council and other interested parties that here's what we've spent, we're on track, and if you have any questions, you know, go ahead and funnel those through me and I'll try to get those answered for you through uh, Josh Netland. Okay? That's all I have. Okay, thank you, Mike. Thank you. Now we'll go into our commission reports, and the first one is planning and zoning. Good evening. Uh, we have three items uh, for your consideration tonight. Uh, the first item that we have is what do we have tonight really are uh, three minor subdivisions um, that require your, your review. And the uh, first one that we have is for uh, Leo and Doris Frazier Trust. It's in part of the southwest quarter, the northwest quarter. It's up off of Ox Lake Landing just north of here. And uh, what they're asking for is to take uh, 6.88 acres and divide it into three lots. This uh, re a variance was approved by the Planning Commission as part of this request, and I'll explain kind of what that was and why it was done that way. It's kind of a unique piece of property in how it lays out in that I try to color code it on the screen here so it's easier to see, but everything that's here in the, uh, uh, the pink, is this, that's the 1,000-foot setback from a general development lake in this way, and the area that's in yellow is from the natural environment lake. And so what we have to do when we look at lots like this, these non-repairing lots that are off the lake, um, and we have crossing um, shoreland district classification of different lakes, we have to take the classification of that which has the most land. And so the natural environment lake on this northerly lot uh, had about 75% and then 25% was general development. And so if you were to create a lot um, according to the ordinance right now, on a natural environment lake, you'd have to create 120,000 square foot, which I've got up here, which is about three acres, and it'd have to be 200 feet wide. And for a general development lake, you'd need a 40,000 square foot lot, and it'd have to be about 150, or need to be 150 feet wide. And, uh, and so what the, what the Frasers proposed with this is because of the, of the lot what they've got, which is 600 feet here, they were going to get three lots regardless of, uh, of how it was going to be laid out. They weren't going to be able to get any more through the variance process. And so what they asked to do was instead of this lot here being 120 square feet, they asked that, because uh, this would technically to meet ordinance, this would be uh, 120,000 square feet, and then these two remaining would have been 40,000. And so basically what they asked to do was say, could we have this lot here be um, approximately 100,000 square feet? Or you look over here on this, you see it says 99,998 square feet, approximately 100,000 square feet, basically for each one of those lots so that they would be equally, um, the equal size lots. They did not, through the variance process, they didn't get any more lots. Um, they just wanted to arrange the lots differently, especially because it lined up with the lots that are back behind it. 
they wanted to match up the same size so that it was so that the lots in the area um, were all the same size. Uh, there weren't any public comment on this during the during the uh, during the, the public meeting that we held, and the planning commission uh, made a unanimous recommendation to approve the subdivision as it's been submitted here with the variance. And I also just want to let you know that we collected three thousand dollars this evening in the park dedication fees, so that also has been paid. So those are like two and a quarter acre lots, right? Each of them. Approximately, yep. Yeah, Close they're about two. And, I mean, they're about two and a half acres. So they definitely the lots, the two lots to the south here exceed dramatically what would be required for a GD Lake, and the lot up here, instead of being 120,000 square feet, is about 100. So it's a it's a difference of about a half an acre. So they allowed that lot to be about a half acre smaller, and then these two lots were um, made larger to make up the difference. There's ample uh, uh, septic uh, sites on both for a primary and alternate. And so they did meet the, all the requirements of the ordinance outside of the variance needed for the lot size. And if there's any questions, otherwise I'd recommend approval as submitted. Make a motion to approve. I'll second that. First, Gary Heacock. Second, Dave Shrupp. All those in favor of the motion on the floor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you very much. Uh, the next item we have on the agenda is uh, Don Wetter Trust. This is part of the southeast quarter, the southwest quarter. It's off of West Shore Drive. This is uh, a pretty straightforward subdivision. Let's see if I can get it up there for everybody to see. Uh, what uh, what the, the property has five acres, and they're proposing to divide it basically into 2.5 acre tracks. Uh, this lot here to the south um, has existing pole building on it now. And then uh, this lot up to the north would have ample size for um, to be able to put a dwelling on it and uh, ample size for septic systems. So this did not require any variances. This just meets the ordinance requirements. Planning Commission held a public hearing and uh, no public comments were made. And uh, they recommended unanimous that uh, um, to approve the subdivision as was submitted. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Brad Nelson first, Gary Heacock second. All those in favor of the motion on the floor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you. Uh, the last item we have on the agenda is uh, property of Roger and Sigrid Hubley. There is is outlot one, part of Urban's Point and part of the vacated road in section 30 of Cross Lake. Uh, what you've got is a, is a triangle type lot here. This is outlot one of the plat. Uh, this lot here, this is an existing garage, and then this lot down here is vacant. This is part of an outlot of the Urban's Point, and uh, proposing to subdivide 2.6 acres into two tracks, so both of these lots meet the requirements of the, of the city land use ordinance, and they have ample septics on both sites. Um, the issue came up uh, during the public hearing of a neighbor having concerns about the lots being too small. He didn't think, the, he thought that the lots were too small. Uh, and uh, and they're not. They were. They're, the lots are, are um, exceeding actually what the ordinance would require. They're 1.2 acres and 1.4 acres, and you'd need about you need just a little under an acre to meet the requirements. So, um, the planning commission did make one recommendation um, as part of the approval that there only would be one entrance off of this, either off of Urban's Point Road or off of White Oak, but not off of both, so that there would just be one one access point to the property. Uh, the Planning Commission did make a unanimous recommendation to approve as submitted, and that would be my recommendation also. Okay. Motion I'll on I'll the floor. I'll make a motion to approve. Dave Shrupp first. I'll second it. Gary Heacock second. All those in favor of the motion on the floor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Um, if it be if it be all right with the with the council, I just want to. I know that every month we give you these statistics, and there's a couple of things I wanted to point out that uh, I thought maybe the public would be interested to hear. Um, so we keep track of how many permits are issued by month, and, and we compare it to years previous. And so, if you look at the number of permits that we've issued so far in 2017, we've issued 222 permits. In 2016, uh, we issued 174. So we're seeing a big uh, a big increase in the number of permits that are being processed by staff. Uh, but what's interesting, uh, a couple of things. One is that uh, in August, we had five new, new homes permitted uh, compared to three last year. 
at, during the month of August. And uh, total number of permits in August were 49 compared to 21 last year, so more than double the number of permits that we've seen come through. So I think it's just uh, uh, really a, a kudos to John and Cheryl for being able to really handle that additional workload that they've gotten and, and still being able to do that in an excellent manner. But one other thing I wanted to point out too, just real quick, was just to give people an idea of just the amount of contact and the people that come to our office looking for information. If you were to add up in this year so far all the counter visits, phone calls, and emails where we've actually worked with a real person, um, we've had over 2,200 of those this year. Um, if you look at the numbers, we've had uh, almost 700 people come to the counter, uh, 11, oh, almost 1,200 uh, phone calls, 350 emails. Uh, those are people. Well, those are real people that are coming and asking questions about what they can do in Cross Lake. So, uh, when you try to just judge from the scope of work and how much is being done. Um, there's a lot of activity right now up in Cross Lake, and it's, it's an exciting time, and, and we're seeing some real, um, some interesting projects come through and, uh, and that. But just I wanted to, it's easy sometimes to see a report, but not until things are pointed out sometimes. It's easy to, to maybe not see um, some of the things that have uh, been really, um, I think, just show the amount of work. I mean, if just alone, you know, last year we had uh, a little over 2,000 of those customer contacts, and this year we're over 2,200. So um, things are picking up, and, and we're seeing some more folks come in and have some mm -hmm. conversations about what they can do in Cross Lake. So I think that's good news. Good. Any other questions for me? Thank you, Chris. Thank Thanks, Thanks, Chris. Chris. Thank you. <coughs> Next on the agenda is Park and Rec. Good evening. Uh, just a quick update on some of our programs. We had a book sale over Labor Day weekend. Um, sale produced uh, $610. I wanted to take the time to thank the volunteers that came out and also the people that donated books and came and purchased materials from the sale. So thanks goes out to those folks. Um, we do have a Zumba class that has uh, started uh, last week and we are, we are offering that Tuesdays from 5 to 6 and also Saturday mornings from 8.30 to 9.30. So that's a new program. Uh, people want to come out and give that a try. Uh, we do have 10 pass punch cards for $50 or a day pass is eight bucks for that class. Um, another AAA class coming up on September 28th from nine to one. If you need the refresher class, you can call the community center, but AAA's uh, number um, where you register is 888-234-1294. It's always a popular class uh, in our area. Uh, and we also offer free trail rides at, uh, for our trail system down at the park, a uh, six mile uh, trail. And those trail times are at 10, 11, and noon on Wednesdays. And we have some volunteers that uh, uh, sponsor that program along with the Pell Foundation. Um, and last but not least, we have our Cross Lake Disc Golf Tournament on, uh, at the end of the month as part of Cross Lake Days. Entry fee is $10 per person and prizes are awarded for that. And that is my report for tonight. Thank you, John. Thanks, John. <clears throat> Moving on to Public Works. Good evening. Good evening. Hi, Ted. Uh, tonight I have uh, two things with three parts of the second part of it. I'm going to let Dave Reese take the second half. First one is we have an engineering proposal for from WSN for the 2018 road projects. Um, it went to the Public Works Commission. Um, we had a four to one that abstained from voting because he lives on the road, but they were in favor of moving the project forward. Um, overall, it would be a $180,000 project. Um, so we'd like permission. Go ahead, Dave. Engineering only. No, that's engineering and overall it's 180,000 with engineering and site everything. Not construction. Not construction. Not construction. Yeah. No. This is for Manhattan Point. This is for Manhattan. And that's in addition to the 85 or so that we gave them for the preliminary. We we have over $85,000 we've invested since 2000 and Eight, nine, nine, nine. Yeah, since 2009, we almost $85,000 we've invested in this project and kept putting it off, putting it off, and putting it off. So it's for the bike trail and Manhattan Point Road construction, reconstruction. Yep. Does anybody have any questions for Ted? And you're looking for a motion from the council for approval for this? To move forward with this, yes. Forward. We'd like to get going on 
the engineering and everything we can do, so we're ready to bid early in the spring. The only question I had relates to um, the discussion or the, the, the move we've made on roads when we repaved them, we're not making them really wide. No, this and was was the prior plan to make it wide, and or was that always just to pick up and take some of the low spots out in the hills and the drainage? And can can I just add that right now the road varies from 22 feet to 23, about six or nine inches wide today. <clears throat> there was a lot of discussion about width and the proposal as it was discussed many times, it was to try to keep it about the same width or about 24 feet, 23 feet in that range. And there was a lot of discussion about improving the site distances. And that's part of the reason why it was surveyed back in 2010 along with the trail. The city invested about $200,000 in the trail that's there and the engineering that went along with it, along with the surveying of the entire roadway. So, um, all in all, that project, um, including the work that's already been done with the trail construction, was about $1.4 in estimate. So the city spent roughly 280000 so far on the trail, plus some surveying. And this proposal would carry it out to do the rest of the road, the rest of the trail, out to 66. Plus, plus yeah. this proposal includes the parking lot. And another street here, here Shady Woods. City Hall. Mm -hmm. Shady Woods mm -hmm. one that's right off of West Shore Drive. Right? Mm. right, in Shady I think just for discussion, we should throw this out there. Is now the city has hired a new city engineer. And at what point do they overlap, or where should one pick up and the other one take over? What's going on with that? Because I thought that we changed. Do you want to yes, help address to that. that? At the budget meeting, I asked the council. I asked, "What do you want me to do? We've spent money um, already on the project with WSN. We have already done surveying. What do you want me to do?" I didn't get any direction. So, with the help of the city administrator, I asked WSN because we'd already spent money with them. They've already got the surveying work, and that's what I was moving forward with. There's a lot of history here. And a lot of, I don't think it makes sense to go back and start all over with. Maybe not. I just want to yeah. talk about it. Just I think the commissioner felt the same way too. Mm -hmm. Now the parking lot out here is a new, that's new business. Yes. Right? Yes. And that was thrown in with the old business. Just economy of scale to do it with the same time with another project, big project, trying to get cheaper, cheaper okay, well, oil I mean, prices. Just so we know what we're doing, you know, I mean. Well, I think one of the comments that I probably had made either to Mike or Ted was that, um, you know, with our levy increase or maybe staying flat, we don't know yet, that we want to be conscientious of every nickel we spend. And mm -hmm. so if, if this helps that overall financial picture, you know, why wouldn't we, um, instead of going and but so spending all the money again for something new where we've already done uh, a large portion of it? But go ahead. Did we ask Bolton Mink what their proposal would be to do the engineering for the road? or and, I mean, did we get anything, or are we just going ahead? I did not get that direction, so I didn't ask. That's what I asked you guys. What do you want, which engineer do you want me to use? Yeah. So, I mean, just so we're aware of it right. and see yeah. if we want to think Any, about it. Yeah. Any other comments for, or questions for Ted? If not, we need a motion on the floor to uh, accept the proposal from WSN for the engineering services for street improvements for 2018. I'll make that motion. First, Dave Shrub. Second? I'll second it. All those in favor of the motion on the floor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carried. Thank you. The next one is uh, some of the paperwork that we have to get taken care of as far as resolutions for the Dream Island Bridge. And I'm going to let Dave take them. Thank you and good evening. Hi, Dave. Hi. The uh, 
subject on the agenda is for Dream Island Bridge Project, and the council should have in their packet a recommendation for award to Redstone Construction, the low bidder. There were six bids received, and uh, their bid was $465,787.25. Um, that was about $11,000 from the engineering estimate. So our recommendation is to move forward with it. Uh, the state aid engineer is uh, behind awarding it. So uh, that's our recommendation. Along with that, a resolution needs to be passed by the city council. That's in your packets. The resolution accepting the bid identifies all the bids that were received and it's part of the assessment process. That's the first step that needs to be taken. Okay. So the first uh, council action is a re resolution accepting the bid from Redstone Construction Company. Is okay. there a motion on the floor to accept? Uh, I'll make that motion. Dave I'll Nevin it. first, Gary Heacock second. All those in favor of the motion on the floor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. And the next one is the resolution declaring the cost to be assessed and ordering preparation of proposed assessment. That's correct. Can you just give me a little bit more on that? <clears throat> sure. The, the next step in the process is to identify the project costs, um, look at what portion of the project costs the city is proposing to assess. And at this point in time, we have um, a bid that we've received. We've got uh, a uh, funding letter from the state. Can you put that on the screen? I think it's important for the people at home to see that this is not a, oh, the you know, we've been spending money right and left that we're getting some support from the state. Right, so the, um, this breaks out the project costs. We have the project bid at 465000 We have all the rest of the project costs besides the construction associated with it that brings it to an estimated project cost of 688000 The amount of the, that the, the state is putting in with bridge bond is uh, roughly 608000 And so uh, the amount estimated to be local share or city cost is 80000 The city's policy has been to assess 50% of bridge costs, similar to what was done with Sunrise Island Bridge. So the amount declared to be assessed would be $40,000. Okay. So in keeping with this step of the Chapter 429 assessment procedure, we're identifying the project costs and what's proposed to be assessed. Are there any questions or so comments for, da oh, Dave, go ahead, one sorry. Mm-hmm. Uh, item two in the resolution identifies a period and an interest rate and that's totally up to the council's discretion. Um, in, in the Sunrise Island Bridge project, the assessments that were estimated on that project were, um, I believe, around $6,000 per lot. On the Three Mile Island Bridge, they're roughly around $1,000 per lot. Um, Sunrise Island was stretched out over a 10 year period as far as the, the, the assessments, likely because they're a little higher assessments. Um, you may not want to go 10 years, uh, maybe five years would seem to be more prudent. And the interest rate that's declared uh, is usually one or two points above what it would cost the city to borrow that money. So, so it's $1,000 per property owner, the assessment? Uh, roughly. It's so go a couple of years on it? Uh, Mike, do you have any, Mike Linus, do you have any comments or suggestions on that? I would do something less than 10 years. Five would be reasonable. 
Same, same okay. interest rate. Mm -hmm. Same interest rate, okay. Council, do you have any questions or comments on that? Um, are you ready to make a motion on this particular resolution? Sure, I'll okay. make a motion that we approve this resolution with the change in the uh, annual installment from 10 years to five. Okay, is there a second on that? I'll second that. All those in favor of the motion on the floor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. Okay, thank you. The next one is a resolution for hearing on the proposed assessment. And, um, we've thrown a tentative date for a, an improvement hearing uh, or an assessment hearing on October 4th. Um, just looking at the, the schedule and the timeline. We have to send mail notice to each of the property owners that would be assessed, potentially assessed, uh, no less than two weeks prior to the date of the hearing. And so looking at that timeline, October 4th would be, in my estimation, probably the soonest we could hold a hearing. That's a Wednesday night. Um, may not be the best for everyone, but uh, we could go later um, possibly before the next council meeting at 6 p.m. Uh, the following Monday. It should be a quick meeting, shouldn't it? Quick meeting? Oh, I think so. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Um, so you have the resolution in front of you stating October 4th at the public hearing. Um, is there a motion on the floor to approve this here, uh, resolution. I'll make that motion. Okay, Dave Nevin first. I'll second it. Second, Gary Hecox. All those in favor of the motion on the floor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. Okay. Okay. October 4th it is. Thank you. All right. Um, I've also prepared for the council's information just an updated project schedule that I'll run around and that gives you uh, a better idea of hearing date and the next steps along the way. So we'll have that here at City Hall. So when did we start? Anyone who's interested. When did we start this discussion? Two and a half years ago? That's how long it takes. Dave, was this yours that was on the back? Oops. So there's a grant agreement that we're working on with the state right now and uh, that will be the next thing that we'll bring back to the council for approval. Great, thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank It'll you. be good to get this one under our belt. That's for sure. Okay, public safety. Good evening. Uh, just one thing, well, not one thing, a couple things, but all to do with one thing. Dogs running at large, uh, new ordinance. Uh, eliminating an ordinance from um, Chapter 2, <coughs> basically d dogs at large, running at large, running around the city, not under physical control or verbal control, that type of thing, just being a general nuisance. Uh, we've had some issues over the years, and we haven't had, again, any bite, you know, where we can go to the person and say, knock it off or, or else. So I'm doing the or else. Um, Pretty much straight up, just asking uh, one to uh, amend Chapter 8 ordinance uh, regarding animals, and that would be deleting that or deleting that one. Mm -hmm. What are you going to enforce? How are you going to enforce it? Fines. Fines. What yep. if they don't pay the fines? Goes That's under taxes. Yeah. And, and I think um, you will review that with us as we go through right. each of these. That's the same thing, it's mm -hmm. the uh, um, administrative fines, mm -hmm. just like we did with the uh, noise ordinance. I'd send out a letter saying. But typically it's a property owner that you're doing that to, right? And you can right, put it on the their taxes. Yep. Well, if they're a property owner, though, you can put it on their property taxes if they won't pay I, it. I would assume, Brad, I don't But know. if they're a renter, which might be a problem, how would you enforce it or get the collections? Is that the 
fair question, Brad. Well, I, yeah. <laughs> okay. The first, the first probably point is, do you like the ability to regulate this? If you think that's okay, he can not only use this, but he's also got the criminal misdemeanor route as well. This isn't the only way he can enforce. This is just one more tool. So if they, if they ignore the admin fines, he's got other, his more classic ways of going about it. But the, the admin fine thing too, you can also choose to, you know, raise those fines if you choose, and you can also choose to, like any old judgment, make collection efforts, not just put it against their land. You can garnish, well, I would think you know. people who habitually let their dogs run wild should have something done. I, you guys yeah. would use your discretion on that if it was right. uh, unusual circumstances. I don't think you'd right, be And if it's running over the neighbor's yard, your friend's house, I'm not going to come out. And they're good with it. I'm not going to come out and say knock it off. I mean, it's only when it's we the have ones that are the a problem, like you said. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm in favor of it. Okay. So this first one is a, a resol resolution eliminating um, section one, uh, chapter eight. And Eric will go through the second one where we where we replace that with slightly different wording. So I need a motion on the floor to eliminate this particular. I'll make a motion we delete existing chapter 8. Dave Shrupp first. Is there a second. second? Second. Dave Nevin second. All those in favor of the motion on the floor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, moving okay. on to the second one. The ordinance that we're adding is dogs running at large. So permitting any dogs to go on or about public streets, alleys, or other places within the corporate limits of the municipality, other than the premises of the owner or harbor thereof, and accept such dog to be on a leash under immediate direction and control of the accompanying person, so, or in an automobile. So, no dogs running at large through the city limits. You can have it, you know, 30 feet away, and you, if you're on uh, a shock collar, or if your dog's good enough that it listens to verbal commands, fine, or on a leash. It's not a leash law. Let's put it that way. It's if there's a problem. It's I mean, basically, is what it comes down to. Yeah. <clears throat> right. I mean, dogs are good. Dogs running at large, not good. Any questions or comments for Chief Lee? So I make a motion to approve the change in Chapter 30. Is that what you're looking this for? This is adding. Or adding, adding Chapter 30. Okay, great. Second. Okay. Second. First, Dave Nevin. Second, Gary Hecox. Uh, all those in favor of the motion on the floor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Going okay, on. The third is amending the ordinance, adding uh, Article 2, the administrative fine for this ordinance. What is the fine, and is it going to be a progressive? $75. Is it going to be progressive or per incident, per day? Uh, it, would, it can be progressive. According to the ordinance, that's up to the council. Seventy-five bucks should hurt enough, I would think. <laughs> but, all right, I make a motion. We approve that. Okay, David Nevin, first to uh, approve adding the administrative fine. I'll the second that. Brad Nelson, second. All those in favor of the motion on the floor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried. All right. Fourth uh, summary of publish a summary of the administrative fine ordinance. That's a simple one. Make a motion. I'll make a cool. motion. Yeah, I'll second. Dave Shrupp uh, first. Dave Devon okay. second. All those in favor of the motion on the floor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. And then fifth, adding the fee to the administrative fine schedule. And that is the seventy-five dollars. Yes. I'll make the motion. <laughs> David Devon is making a motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. Gary Heacock second. All those in favor of the motion on the floor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. One last thing I want to thank Ted and his crew for putting up the speed signs on Daggett Pine Road. I've got 30 uh, charts that we can go through over the last week from, from that stuff if you want to go or we can just forego it and go watch the game. <laughs> <laughs> they they you look real, Dave. They look right. real nice. Yes. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chief Lee. Now, moving Yeah, we on. are up 16 to 6. I mean, other than your dog stuff, we are, we're yep. winning. So. Sorry, John. But we're not paying any attention up here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, you think that there's other stuff on this computer, but. <laughs> okay. Um, city Attorney Report, Brad Person. Just uh, one quick issue. Back to uh, the Dream On project. As you remember, we needed two easements. You gave me authority to settle both of them. Um, you gave me a range to settle out the one. Um, we did settle, so I'm looking for authority to have Mike cut a check to me. The other one we did not. So that would, the, the, the good news is the one we didn't settle, I suppose, is the, the small one. It's not a real big dollar figure. It's under five grand to just uh, order the, uh, to put into the court uh, the, the amount of the appraisal. The hearing on that will be October 26th, it is. That's when we'll have title to it, even if we don't settle. And then we can argue for however long it takes, but after the project's done, about whether we owe them three grand or six grand or 12 grand or, <laughs> you know, it won't be a, a big dollar figure, we hope. But um, that's the status. So looking for authority to basically pay into the court appraised value on the one, Nyholm, and they settled off for on, on Shorzy. Was okay. the settlement on the high end of what the authorized amount was? It was about five grand less than you authorized me. Great. Okay. Good. Thank you, Brad. Yep. Anything else? That was it. Uh, look, just other than a motion for both of those so that Mike can get me the money. <laughs> oh, okay. So you weren't looking for a motion from the council. Yes. Okay. Do we have a motion on the council, uh, from the council? I'll make that motion that we... Dave Shrupp first. I'll second. Gary Heacock second. All those in favor of the motion on the floor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carry. Public forum. No action will be taken on any of the issues raised. If appropriate, the issues will be placed on the agenda of a future council meeting. Speaker must state their name and address. Each speaker is given a three-minute time limit. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> is there any old business? Any new business? If not, I'd like to entertain a motion to approve to adjourn, I'll to make adjourn it. To adjourn this meeting. Approved to adjourn.